is the notes for AP Calculus on the topic of manipulating equations and solving systems of equations. So let's take a look at these first examples here. And it says solve for y, but it says in terms of the other variable or variables. So what that means is you're not going to get y equals 2 or y equals negative 5. You're not going to get a constant for y. When it says in terms of the variables, you're going to have y equals, and then there's going to be some other variables, that are x, t, whatever the variables are. So let's take a look at this first example. Notice, when we're solving for y, we're trying to isolate it. We've got a y there and a y right there. So what we want to do first, if there's more than one term that has the variable we're trying to solve for, is group all the terms that have that variable on one side of the equation, all the terms that don't have that variable on the other side. So what I'm going to do here, since these are already on the same side, is just move the terms that don't have y. In other words, subtract the x squared from both sides and add the 8x to both sides. Now let's see what that leaves us with. So we still have the 3xy minus 4y equals negative x squared plus 8x. Or we write 8x minus x squared. Then... What you can do now to isolate the y, since we've got all the y terms on the left-hand side here, is to use factoring and factor out y. So you like a GCF. So you take out the y, and then what's left is 3x minus 4. That's what helps you to isolate it. And then we'll leave the right side alone. And then the last step to isolate y is just divide by this 3x minus 4. Our final answer is y equals, because here the 3x minus 4 is reduced out, negative x squared plus 8x divided by 3x minus 4. Now you could factor out x out of the numerator if you wanted to, but you can see that there's nothing that um, factors of the denominator, so that wouldn't really simplify at all. So you can leave your answer like that. So now we've solved for y, and in this case it's in terms of x. Let's take a look at a couple more here. This one, we've got the y inside a natural logarithm. Remember, that's what the ln stands for. Remember what that ln is short for. It means the log with a base of e. For e, whatever is approximately equal to 2.71. It's a constant, kind of like pi. It's an irrational number that goes on forever without a pattern. It's called Boiler's number. So now, what we want to do first, since this y is inside the natural logarithm, is isolate the natural logarithm. In other words, move that 2 by dividing both sides by 2. Or actually, before we do that, we'll eventually do that. Let's add the 1 first. That would be a little easier. So let's isolate the natural log. So now we'll have 2 times the natural log of y minus 4 equals 3x squared. Negative 17 plus 1 is negative 16. And then we can divide by the 2. I select the natural log. And those 2 reduce out. And now is where I'm going to actually write the ln, remember, short for natural log, which is log base e. So I'm going to write it log base e of y minus 4 equals. You can split this up if you want, or just leave it like this. I'm going to leave you. I'm just going to leave it 3x squared minus 16 all over 2. And now, the way we're going to solve for y to isolate it is to switch it from log form to exponential form. So remember to switch it out of log form into exponential form. First, you identify the base, which in this case is e. And then remember, logarithms are equal to exponents. So this on the other side of the equation of the log, 3x squared minus 16 all over 2, becomes our exponent. So that e, I'll put it in parentheses so it's clear the whole thing is the exponent, is raised to the 3x squared minus 16 over 2. And what that equals, when you switch it to exponential form, is what's inside the log, in this case, the y minus 1. So that's how you're able to get that y out of the logarithm so you can solve for it. And you can see the last step, you just add 4 on both sides. 
So I'll just switch the size of the equation here. I'll put the y on this side. And it really doesn't matter which of these you put first. I'll just put the 4 first plus e to the 3x squared minus 16 over 2. So now I've solved for y, and again, it's in terms of x. OK, now let's take a look at a problem that's kind of a little bit like the reverse of the one we just did. This time, again, we're still solving for y. The y is up in the x point. Uh, so it's, you've got e to the y. So first, just like here, we isolated the natural log first. The variable you're solving for is inside the log. Here, the variable we're solving for is in the exponent, so we're going to isolate that e to the y by first subtracting 5 on both sides. So we get 3e e to the y equals 4x minus 5, and then divide by 3. So we get e to the y. Again, you can split this up if you want to. I'm just going to leave it like this. And divide them both by 3 is what I mean. Or you can just leave it 4x minus 5, all divided by 3. So here, to get the y out of the exponent, we use the reverse process of what we did right here. Remember, in the previous problem, from this step to this step, we went from log form to exponential form. And now, if this is the exponential form, we're going to switch it into log form. Now I'm going to solve for that one. So the reverse of what we did in the previous problem. So to switch to log form, well, first you write log. The base is e. Remember, the log equals the x one, so it's going to equal this y. And what's inside the log is the 4x minus 5 over 3. You put in parentheses, so that's where the whole thing is inside the log. And remember, the log always equals the x one. It equals y. You can see that allowed us to get the y out of the exponent and really solve for y as well. You could leave your answer like this. But remember, the log base e is usually written as the natural log, ln. I'm just going to write it that way. Uh, 4x minus 5 all over here. So now we've solved for y, and again it's in terms of x. Take a look at a couple more of these. So in this one, notice our y we're trying to solve for is on there and on there. So let's first eliminate the fraction by multiplying both sides of the equation by that denominator, which happens to be y squared plus 3. So that way, the y squared plus 3 is reduced out, and all that's left is 1. And then think about whether or not it would be useful to distribute that out on the right side. Well, since we're trying to isolate the y, if you distribute it out, then we're going to have a whole bunch of terms that have y squared in it. It's actually going to make it more difficult to solve for problems. So we're better off just leaving it like this for now. And the next step to help us isolate the y is actually to divide by this x squared cubed plus 2x minus 5 on both sides. So now we've got 1 over x cubed plus 2x minus 5 equals these reduced out here, so just y squared plus 3. And then if you subtract 3 from both sides, y squared equals 1 over x cubed plus 2x minus 5 and minus 3. And then the last step, <coughs> to solve y to get rid of that square, the reverse of squaring something is to take the square root of both of it. And then you have to take the square root of the other side of the equation as well. So I'm just going to switch sides here so the y is on the left. You don't have to. But so you have y equals. And then one thing to remember. Whenever you take an even root of both sides of an equation, you, <coughs> there's two possibilities. You always need plus or minus. Whenever you take an even. In this case, we took the square root of both sides, so it would be plus or minus the square root of 1 over x cubed plus 2x minus 
five. So that would be how you solve for y. Mm -hmm. Some weird looking answers here. In terms of, I guess, in terms of x. All right, now let's take a look at one where y is inside of a trig function. In this case, it's inside of tangent. What can we do to isolate or solve for y? So what we can do here is, since the tangent's already isolated, there's nothing else. So we can use the inverse function. So inverse of tangent is written as arc tangent. Oops. So we're taking the arc tangent of tangent of 3y plus 2. But that means we have to take the arc tangent of the other side of the equation as well. And this works for any trig function. If this had been sine, you would take the arc sine of both sides. If it had been cosine, arc cosine, and so on. Because the inverse trig function reverses the original one, so those essentially cancel out. Now, remember on your calculator, arc tangent is also written like that. Same thing, just two different ways of writing it. So, since those are inverse functions, they reverse each other, essentially canceling out. So all that's left on this side is 3y plus 2 equals the arc tangent of x squared plus 5. And now that that y is not inside the trig function anymore, it's not too bad to isolate it. You just subtract the 2. But notice this is inside of arc tangent, so you can't subtract the 2 from the 5, so it just be arc tangent of x squared plus 5 minus 2, and then finally divide by 3. Isolate that y. y equals, again, you can split it up if you want to divide both by 3 or just leave it like this, arc tangent x squared plus 5 minus 2 all divided by 3. So that's how you can manipulate equations to get them in a form that uh, sometimes is more helpful or what you're looking for. In this case, solving for y. Alright, now let's take a look at Solving systems of equations. So a system of equations is just when you have more than one equation. And the two major techniques you want to make sure you're familiar with are substitution and elimination. All right, so here we've got one linear equation and another linear equation. So what we're really finding graphically, remember, is where these two intersect. Okay. So since these are already lined up here, this one's probably easiest to solve by elimination. So if we call this one line 1 and this one line 2, we just multiply, in this case it's probably easiest, you can eliminate either the x's or y, then eliminate the x's by multiplying line 1 by 2 times line 1, so that'll make it 6x, 2 times 4y is 8y, don't forget you have to multiply the other side of the equation as well to balance it out, 2 times 1 gives you 2. And I'll leave line 2 alone. Leave it as negative 6x plus 2y equals. And then add those together. The x is eliminate, hence the name elimination. Uh, 8y plus 2y is 10y. 2 plus 3 gives you 5. And then divide by 10. Y equals one half. And then, now that you know the y coordinate of the point of intersection, you can go ahead and substitute this in to either one of these. I'm just going to use the uh, line one there. Substitute for y, so we have to solve help us solve for x. We have three x plus four, and we just figured out the y coordinate is one half, so we have to figure out now what the x coordinate is. Well, four times a half, two goes into four twice, that's just two. Then you subtract the 2, you get 3x equals 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so x equals negative 1 third. So we can write our solution here. The point negative 1 third, the x coordinate, and 1 half is the y coordinate. So that's the point where these two would intersect. That's one method that oftentimes is helpful. Another method you want to make sure you know, though, also is substitution. 
So this next problem, also a two linear equation, they just happen to, be, happen to be A and B rather than X and Y. This one's probably a little easier to use substitution because the A is already isolated. We could have done that on this one here, just would have taken a little more work using substitution. Since the A is already isolated, we know A equals 1 minus 2B. This is called substitution because your first step, once you get a variable isolated, is to substitute that in, in this case, for A, because that's what A equals. So we'll get 3 and A is the same as 1 minus 2B minus 5B equals A. And now we have an equation we can just simplify and solve it for E. So that give you 3 minus 6B minus 5B. So if it's my life terms, it would be 3 minus 11B equals negative 8. Subtract the 3, the negative 11B equals negative 8 minus 3 to negative 11. Divide by negative 11, so B would equal 1. And then the easiest word, place to find A, you can plug it in any of them, but notice that A is already isolated in this equation, so let's just substitute the B right there. So we get A equals 1 minus 2 times 1. Well, that's just 1 minus 2 times 1 is 2, so A would equal negative 1. And in this case, this is not X and Y, we don't necessarily know um, if these would be graphed or if they just have a different meaning to them. So if it's not X and Y, you might just oftentimes you just leave your answers like this. A equals negative 1 and B equals 1. Now let's take a look at one where it's not linear. Well, at least one of them is. This first one, Y equals X minus 2. Is linear, but this one's got a square root, so it's not a straight line. But we can still solve by substitution or elimination. In this case, you can see it's not going to be necessarily super easy to eliminate um, and solve, although you could do that. It's probably a little easier to use substitution since both of these are solved for. So I'm just going to substitute this in. This is what y equals in for y in the other equation. So we get so the y there squared of x minus 2 equals x minus 2. And then to make it easier to solve, the next step to get rid of that square root, to reverse that is to square that side, but to balance that, you have to square the other side of the equation as well. So that square root squared cancel out, so you get x minus 2. But be careful here, x minus 2 squared is not x squared minus 4. Uh, oftentimes, people will make that mistake remember what it really is. It means the same as x minus 2 times x minus 2. And then if you multiply that out, you get x squared minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x, negative 2, negative 2, plus 4. Then you want to get one side equal to 0. So if you subtract the x and add the 2, that leaves us with 0 equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. Factors in the x. Factors of 6 that have to be negative 5 would be negative 3 and negative 2. And you get x equals 3 and x equals 2. Since we have a square root, let's just double check and make sure that um, they work there in the square root. So if you plug in 3 minus 2, that gives you a positive number. 2 minus 2 is 0. So both of those you can take the square root of, so it looks like we're okay. And then to solve for y, you can put, really plug it into either one of these. So I just need the second one there, one at a time, plug it in for x. So y would equal 3 minus 2, give you 1. So one solution, one of would be the point 3, 1. And then if you plug in 2 there, y would equal 2 minus 2 is 0. So the other point of the intersection would be for x and 0 for y. So in this case, we've got two different points of the intersection where these two graphs cross. So we got first one that is not linear. And that concludes the notes for AP Calculus on the topics of manipulating equations and solving systems.